Hi, I'm Peter Rose, founder along with Currency Trading. Are your Forex trades losing every time? What's going on with that? How come that's happening? Let's take a look at it. Um, there's two major reasons. Number one is obvious. You don't know what you're doing. You don't know how to trade. You're constantly going to be losing. Every now and then you're going to get lucky. Even a blind pig in a snowstorm will find an acorn if he looks long enough and you'll win enough trades even if you don't know what you're doing from a statistical standpoint. So only you can determine whether you have a valid methodology of trading or not. And it's not indicative of the number of times that you lose, nor is it indicative of the t number of times that you win. It's a sense that you have, a confidence that you have in what you're doing, that the education that you have is sound, that the methodology that you've created for your trading is sound, that the rules that you've developed are um, rules uh, that allow some flexibility during um, uh, real-time trading, uh, and yet at the same time are methodology, methodological rules and not system-based rules. And if you've seen uh, enough of my videos, then you understand what, what that all means. So. The first reason that you're that you're not losing is that you're losing, is because you simply don't know how to trade. You, you don't have the skills yet, and you are going to lose, not only statistically, a lot of times, but just from a practical standpoint. In, in a worst case worst case scenario, you'll lose all your money. It might take four months, um, but you'll lose it all. It's, it's just if you just don't know what you're doing, you, you'll lose it all. The other aspect of why you're losing a lot is because of two kind of sub-corollaries. One is that you are in a statistical drawdown. If you're a day trader, or even if you're not a day trader, there's a very high probability that within 100 trades you're going to lose six times in a row. Well, there's also a high probability that you're going to win six times in a row. It's not a double-digit probability, but there is a probability, a strong probability, that within 100 trades, <coughs> you'll have six losses in a row. <clears throat> there's a smaller probability that you'll lose uh, 13 times in a row. Not very likely. Usually you're going to need to go and do a um, couple of thousand trades before you're going to run into that anomaly because 13 losses in a row is pretty high. I've had a loss of thir 13 uh, losses in a row and it was not pretty. But I hit the six losses in a row all the time. And it doesn't, it, it isn't a, uh, like there's a 4% or 8% probability that you're going to lose six times in a row within uh, 100 trades. It might be you lose three and then you win four or five and then you lose another six or eight. It, there's no rhyme or reason to it. What we're doing is we're looking at a lot, large sample sizes of trades. At least a hundred, probably more like um, 300 trades, in order to get the distribution of your trading ability so that you're trading well, you know what you're doing, but over 400 trades or 300 trades, you'll go back and say, gee, um, <clears throat> back in April I lost six times in a row. Or, geez, I just had a runner at 13 losses in a row. Will those probabilities switch around and you'll have 13 winners in a row? Um, why not? It's probability, it's probability. Doesn't matter which side of the coin it's being flipped on, right? <laughs> that's, just, that's just statistics. So what do you do? How do you know? You start losing, and how do you know that, oh well, um, I could expect within 100 trades I'm going to lose six times in a row. Let's just say, whether that's true or not, let's just say that that, that, that works out for you, that in 100 trades that you're going to lose six times in a row. And so far you've lost four times in a row. So you say, can you say, well, I've only got two more losses to go before uh, I hit my six. 
No. It could be seven losses in a row. It could be just the four. It could be 22 losses in a row. You just don't know. And that's the, that's the problem from a psychological standpoint. You don't know. So now you fall back on that first reason. If you don't know how to trade or you do know how to trade. If you do know how to trade, then you have to ask yourself, where am I experiencing these, these losses, these runs of losses? If I'm experiencing six losses in a, six losses in a row, um, and then I, I get a, uh, a break, and I win five or six times, then I get another six losses in a row, and then I get four winners, and then I get another six losses, well, you've lost a lot. But now you have to ask yourself, is my trading methodology correct or not? Because I'm statistically now within 300 trades, I've lost, well, you can look at your win to loss ratio when you are doing well, and you can say I'm a 60-40 trader. Um, six winners, 60 winners for every 40 losers. Now you look at that statistic over 300 trades, so um, 180 trades versus uh, the other ones. Um, well, how many times have I lost? If within 300 trades I, I should have only lost X number of, of trades, but, but within 100 trades I've lost that number, that indicates a, a, a probably a method, methodological <laughs> problem. You, you need to look into what's going on with your trading. You know, maybe you're, you're, you're new to trading and you've caught one of these huge run-ups in the Forex market. Um, you know, maybe you're, I mean, we're seeing uh, major swings of uh, seven, 800 pips when they would go for months and months and months. And you are in there and you're working on your methodology and your rules. So they're based on this trend. You're, you're in a trend. It's like all the people who got into the stock market during uh, uh, the big tech run-up. You know, are, are, you, you couldn't lose any money. People were making millions of dollars investing in tech stocks. If it had a, a tech name after it, you bought it and it was a winner. Uh, until all of a sudden the tech industry matured and ran into some problems. Some of those companies start started losing money. Everybody pulled the kimono open and went, ah, this is going to collapse. And that was a self-fulfilling prophecy. And the whole thing fell apart because that period of innovation and whatnot ended. And now a lot of those company, companies are going into a more mature mode. So if you're in a situation where you've developed all of your trading skills uh, based on a trend following system and your rules are trend following and you're a, a believer in trends and all of a sudden price goes into a chop for um, two months well you're screwed you, you don't know how to deal with the chop and so that's a methodology issue is that your rules that you've developed or your methodology that you have developed um, doesn't take into account trading, which if it did, it would be agnostic to the whether the fact that you're on a trend or you're on a uh, you're in a range bound uh, area, or in your what I call a more severe range bound areas, you're in a chop. So uh, you have those three major types of of price action, I guess, that you could be involved with, and you have to be aware of. You don't have to experience those uh, 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 trading uh, scenarios. You could be in this massive trade trend, but you have to you have to say to you, as you're learning, uh, and you say, thank your lucky stars, I got this long trend, and it seems to be going, and all the news and all that stuff seems to be supporting that this this currency pair is going to be increasing in value over a long period of time. And you get in and 
two months later you're making money and, uh, and you're 60 40 trader 70 30 trader whatever whatever it is that I mean I don't I don't think if you're if you're not a 60 40 trader you're not really successful in the first place and so I you're not going to be able uh, like a lot of these guys say well I got a 53 percent win rate I got a three percent edge and I make a lot of money well yeah they're experienced and they can take that three percent edge and they can really jack the um, uh, jacket when it uh, swing for the fence when the price is really going in their favor. That's a subsidiary <coughs> aspect of trading that most of you are not going to be involved in. You have to be trading eight, ten lots before you're able to take advantage of that sort of thing. <coughs> Other than that, you're just trading all in, all out. And uh, the uh, trading all in, all out, uh, at that level, you should be able to <coughs> establish a fairly a fairly accurate win to loss ratio for yourself. I mean, I wouldn't I jump up and down until you've worked with your methodologies and your rules and stuff and you're successful over, um, say, 100 trades to develop that uh, win to loss ratio. And hopefully you're up around that 60 40 level. Because you're going to need that 60 40 level when that uh, trend following process changes and all of a sudden you go into range bound movement. The 60-40 indicates that you understand trading to the extent that you can recognize when when your methodology isn't working correctly because by the time you've established that 60-40 in that whether it's a range bound period that you're in or whether it's a trend trend based period um, you've had enough experience in order to say gee what happens when this trend ends? So you ask yourself those condi the, that, that question. It, it's just like learning how to drive a car. You know, learn how to drive a car. And uh, when I taught my kids how to drive, uh, you know, they're in high school or whatever, and you're taking driver's ed, you know, and you're actually getting out there on the road and getting ready for your license toward the end of the, end of the, end of the school year. And you have the opportunity during those rainy periods to take somebody out into a, a parking lot and slam on the brakes when it's raining. Or when I was working with my kids, um, they were taking driver's ed during the um, uh, period where we were in winter and they were in, live in New England. And so I'd take them out to a <clears throat> an empty school parking lot or, or uh, uh, at you know on a, on a weekend or something when there were no cars there or uh, shopping mall or something when there were no cars there and, and at night after everything had closed down we'd drive the car and in the in the snow there'd be two three four inches of snow on the ground hit hit the brakes go into a broad slide do a do a donut let's see what let's see what happens so when you uh, take go out into those conditions you've been driving on good conditions and now you go into the snow and you say well I'm not going to have the tr same traction that I had. You know that you're not going to have that same traction. You know what the car is going to do. It's going to slide, whereas on a dry pavement, you know, you might chatter a little bit and then you'd be okay. So you have some precognition of what that car is going to do. And if you've done any trading at all, even though it's all in a, in a trending environment, you've done enough reading about things and you've seen enough past charts to say things don't go in trends for ever. Well, what do they do? Well, they go into the ranges. And a, a short range than that is a chop. You may decide, well, if I recognize I'm in a chop, um, I, I just won't trade. And you're not going to run into a chop if you're a, a, a long-term trader. And I don't advise Forex traders to be long position traders anyway because the, of the uncertainty and the leverage you're dealing with can really work against you long term. But from a day trader standpoint, you know the chop right away. You're looking at a five minute chart and it's going like this or, or just look at the close of business for the two pair countries and the, the uh, you know, where the patterns would be going like this and there and all of a sudden you like that when everybody's gone home <laughs> at the end of the day. That's a chop. You wouldn't notice that on a daily chart. Regardless of the fact, if you're looking at the charts, you see that. 
So trends end, what happens? You're gonna go into a range. Well, what would I do if I got into a range? How would I know that the range was there? How do you determine that you are in a range? You start getting stopped out more when you normally wouldn't get stopped out. So you go, well, I must be in a range. Okay, so I gotta play the range. So you need some rules that are methodologically sound as to um, either reducing your profit target time frames or uh, decreasing the amount of risk that you're taking on the trade by shortening your stop or simply by reducing the number of lots that you're trading until you get the, get the feeling of what's going on. I have been in to uh, both of those conditions in the last uh, six months. I have lost tens and tens and tens and tens of thousands of dollars because we've been going through um, trending periods of a couple of 300 pips. We've gone immediately into range-bound action of 20 or 50 pips. Uh, we've chopped it for uh, periods where there shouldn't be any chop. You're in the uh, opening and very active uh, stages of the, the trend. And so I'm getting whacked up all over and I'm in a losing streak. Um, I haven't lost six in a row, but I've lost probably of the last, say, 20 trades that I've taken. Um, and some of those have been carries and so, but I'd say um, 12 of them uh, have been losers. They're not sequential losers. Uh, they'll be uh, in the month of um, uh, June, I got a break and I, I made, <laughs> I made 4,000 bucks on the month <laughs> with the size of bank that I was trading because I had reduced my size down as about uh, uh, 4% gain for the month. <laughs> so <laughs> I just, uh, I thought, well, maybe I, I'm over this. And then I lost $30,000. I go, well, what the hell is going on here? Because it went from the trending in, into a chop. I tried to uh, uh, counteract for that. But I'm into this just dumbass statistical bad luck. Because um, there were months last year, we're in July of 2024, there were months in... Um, um, well, I was, I was profitable 80% of the days that I traded um, for a lot of last year, 2023, 80% profitable days. So you can't have a whole lot of losing trades to be profitable at the end of the day. Um, so I had, I had really, I was, I had uh, uh, three months where I had $30,000 net uh, gain months. So I was, I was doing great. So I was in my 13, 15, 18 winners in a row type of thing uh, until I hit the end of the year and it just went and I just lost an enormous amount of money. And that carry has carried through into this year. And because I've been more selective on the numbers of times that I've traded, um, I was very light in trading for the first few months of the year simply because I had taken such a horrendous loss from, the, from uh, 2023 and was just stumbling through and recognized that I was in the statistical losing point. Well, um, I didn't slow down my trading, but my trading activity slowed down simply because I wasn't seeing the opportunities to get into the trades to take them and the ones that I did take that statistic comes along and I lose $500 or whatever it was you know <laughs> uh, yesterday I had a pretty good day I won I won 500 bucks but the day before that I lost uh, 100 the day before that I lost uh, 300 the day before that I lost 1300 <laughs> <laughs> the day before that, I made $27. <laughs> so it's just been miserable. But I have not changed my rules. I have not changed my methodology. 
I, I, it's just got to work itself out. And, and it's simply the statistics uh, catching up with me because I'll do um, four to, to uh, oh, 350 to 450 closed positions a year in my trade. I'm a day trader. I try to trade every day. Um, I'm taking one trade a day, um, sometimes two, sometimes I'll take four. It just depends, but I'm averaging about, oh, say, say 400 positions a year. So I've got good statistical uh, data to go by, but I've also got an enormous number of trades to say, well, I'm going to get six losers or seven losers or eight losers or something like that every hundred trades. <laughs> so I'm doing 400 trades. <laughs> I've got 400. <laughs> oh, man. I've got four times eight, you know, um, losers in, scattered in there. And because I'm trading a six-figure account, some of those fuckers are pretty big. <laughs> But I'm not going to change. I'm not going to change because I've traded enough to know that my methodology is solid. I simply have to drop my trading size until I get through this stuff. And instead of losing on a 10 lot or a, or a 20 lot, I'll lose on a 3 or a 6 lot. There's still losers. If you lose 10 pips or 20 pips on a 3 lot, it's still 600 bucks, 500 bucks loss. And those add up. You do that ten times in a row. You're five, eight, six grand down. You it just and it just keeps going. It doesn't end. So are your forex trades losing every time? It isn't every time. It seems that way because the losses hurt, and and the winners you just kind of breathe a relief and you wonder whether you just got lucky, whether you're statistically lucky, or whether your rules are starting to work for you. You you don't know. You may need somebody to advise you on that, you know, when I have folks that contact me, they'll say, oh, I've been doing this and blah, 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 and I, I just keep losing them. And they go, well, have you tried this and have you tried that? No, I, I hadn't thought about that. I do that, but I said, well, you, you know, just try that. Try this one simple thing. This is what you've been doing. Just tweak that one point of it. I never hear back from anybody because nobody bothers to thank me for anything, but that's okay. Um, if I can help you out, that's fine. Sometimes it takes an external observer um, in order to take a, uh, an objective view of what you're doing. And sometimes I just throw my hand up and say, hey, man, I don't know. I don't know how good a trader you are. You don't have metrics. Most of you that are trading don't understand the importance of, of your trading metrics and how you use them to improve your trading. Um, so you don't keep metrics. You don't know that. You're trading multiple currency pairs, and you're trading DAX and gold, and you're coming back and uh, you're trying to work Forex into it, and you're trading exotics pairs, and, and you're doing 200 to 1 leverage one day and 100 to 1 the next, and so you're all over the place. I can't help you. I just, I just can't help you. And I, I, um, I can only advise you as to what I think you should be doing. But, but nobody takes my advice on that because they're too busy trading gold and DAX and, and exotic Forex pairs. But that's okay. Are your Forex trades losing every time? First of all, it's not every time. Second of all, you got to figure out, is it you? Are you just not a good trader? Or are your, is your methodology flawed and it's exacerbated by the fact that you're in some statistical... Uh, drawdown loss. I mean, have you traded enough in order to, to hit one of those statistical losses? Have you traded a hundred times? And, and what has your trading been like? I mean, when you're learning to trade the first year or so, you can't count most of the statistics anyway because you don't know what you're doing. You're kind of stumbling along. If you have an organized education, if somebody puts you on a path, you can get to a um, a 60-40 level relatively quickly it's just a matter you might not be winning as much you may be winning but not enough to overcome the losses but you're still a 60-40 trader once you're there 
then you know that you, you've got some idea uh, of your trading. But if you don't have metrics to go by, you, you, you know, you have really no idea. And so um, if you do have those sorts of, of, of uh, idea of your basic skill level, I can generally look at that and say, okay, well, here's some, here's some guidance for you. But don't quit your Forex trading just because you're losing all the time. Don't whine about it. Fix it. Peter Rose, Longwood Currency Trading. Have a great day and have a great trading day.